I've done it again. I've acquired yet another piece of portable computing history. This is the 1989 Atari portfolio as seen in the 1991 classic Terminator 2. Um, actually, it was used in the movie to hack into an ATM. And apparently, uh, still has a cult following, mostly as a result of the movie appearance. The Atari portfolio, I'm not sure when they stopped making them, but this one was made in 1989, which was the year it was introduced, and uh, required a little bit of work to get it working again, but nothing serious. Here it is. Um, what I've had to do to this machine was relubricate the screen hinges because they were they were too stiff. In fact, they were so stiff that I thought the plastic was going to break, but luckily there there were no signs of damage. Um, other than that, it had sat for about a couple of years or so before it was last turned on. So when I got it, I went to go power it up after putting fresh batteries in it, and it wouldn't turn on took several attempts, it still wouldn't turn on, so I disassembled it and I checked it for damage or I didn't really see anything wrong with it. I put it back together again and I let it sit overnight with fresh batteries and it turned on the next morning without any problems. It's been working fine ever since. So I'll tell you a little bit about this machine. It is running MS-DOS. Actually, no, I'm sorry, it's not MS-DOS, it's DIP-DOS. And that stands for, um, what the hell does that stand for? Anyway, it doesn't matter. DIPDOS is compatible almost 100% with MS-DOS. uses the same commands. In fact, here's the command line here. Um, it responds to most of the same commands. This is actually DIPDOS 2.11. And uh, it, uh, it does respond to the commands pretty easily. Like I can, you know, change directory. Oops, system. I can't type. System. There we go. And there it is. So anyway. How does it work? Okay, the Atari portfolio runs on an 8088 compatible processor. It's actually, I think, a modified 80C88. Um, it uses a proprietary memory card as storage. And these are razor thin. They're very small in capacity. They range from 32 kilobytes to about 128 kilobytes. There are modifications available to allow a standard PCM CIA flash card to work in these. Um, that's been done successfully. It has about 32K of onboard memory. That's uh, not necessarily RAM, but that's uh, in flash storage. The memory in these machines, I'm sorry, the storage portion of the memory is volatile and it requires battery power to retain memory, just like the earlier Palm series uh, handhelds. And as such, the memory cards themselves have built-in batteries. And I'll show you one right here. This is a 30 or 64K, I'll put the camera down. This is a 64 kilobyte memory card. And uh, I'll show you the battery is, well, I'm not going to take it out because I have stuff in there. But the battery comes out just by pulling this, um, this door out. Let me get that in the camera right here. So let's take another close-up look at the machine with the memory card out. 